Okay, first mate. So you're kind of doing a pilot test on uh, something. What are you? What are you doing here? Well, I discovered something on uh, the internet today. People canning bacon. And so I've become experienced at canning other things, like um, we've made recently canned a bunch of chili, and uh, I've canned cheese, uh, we've canned tomatoes, carrots, beans. So today we found out about, or I learned about canning bacon. So here's what we're doing. Um, this is what it looks like before it's gonna be going into the, um, into the canning machine or pot. So let me get the. Um, now you're going to show them how you've done it. Yes, we are. I need all these lids. We've got to put them in the hot water. Put the bacon on the. Let's start over. You want to make sure when you put the bacon down. All right, we're using paper. This you, this is parchment paper. I read that you can also use a painting a masking pa uh, paper from a painting store. That works really well. Or you can also use brown paper bags. You do not want to use wax paper. Wax paper doesn't work. You don't want. The, you can either uh, cook the bacon first till it's like almost done. You don't want it crisp. Or you can just do it like this. I've heard. I read that. Uh, it's better to start off with bacon cooked, but I read two other websites that said you can start with raw bacon But you don't want the bacon to touch each other because if they do they will cook together And then it's hard to get everything out of the jar um, And then when you do decide to open it, it's going to cook and it's going to sterilize So we don't need to start off with sterilized equipment. It's going to get to about 240 degrees at about uh, 10 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes So it is going to be sterilized um, I'm using pint jars. If you want to do a quart per jar, I mean a pound per jar, then you want to use quart jars and use the wide mouth jars so it all fits in. I'm using pint jars and we're putting a half a pound of bacon or about eight strips of bacon thick cut. You want to use thick cut also because it um, it's going to get thinner. So I'll uh, start off with this. So we found some bacon on sale. It was $2.99 a pound thick cut. Now we're going to fold, uh, if you were using a quart size jar, then you would actually have half a sheet of paper that this paper would come up about halfway, and then you would fold this over on top of this sheet of paper. But because we're using pint jars, it's we have to do it uh, folded in thirds, and then we're just using an extra piece of paper to put over the top of it. And then we're cutting off the excess so that it, because we're having to wind this up to fit it into the jar. And you'll see why you need a wide mouth jar rather than one of their regular jars. All right, so we're gonna fold it about a third up. And then another third over to that one. And then we're gonna roll it up. And by the way, uh, we're supposed to tell you, according to the government, um, the Food, Drug and Food and Drug Administration, uh, they don't approve of this, and if you do this, it's at your own risk. And now we're putting it in the jar, and it's sliding straight down in, and it still has about almost an inch of headroom. All right, folks, so here we're putting the last jar in, the canner. We're going to light her up at the little gas stove up. We found it uses about one canister, about three quarters of the way or so, wouldn't you say? <coughs> First mate? I'm sorry. One of the little gas canisters, gas cans, about three quarters of it gets used up during this process. Oh, yeah, start off with a fresh canister unless you have your own uh, gas stove. Yep. 
but uh, we don't want to use although we have three uh, two spare CNGs we don't want to use our CNG stove because that is a, a pain to refill anyway all right well, we're gonna get her cooking up and uh, we'll do progress and reports just make sure that you if you do this just follow you know the manufacturer's recommendation for canning um, you know we've got the kind that has the uh, what is this called? This pressure uh, gauge. Pre yeah, the gauge. Some people though just don't have the gauge, but we have the gauge. So we're going to get it up to 10 pounds of pressure and keep it there for 90 minutes. Um, that's where you want to get. So whatever kind of pressure cooker you have, 10 pounds or 11 pounds, 90 minutes. Very good. Okay, folks. I'm not sure exactly how much you'll be able to see. There's not a lot of light coming in here, but this is the next morning. We've uh, let the uh, cooker completely slow down, or slow down. We've let the cooker completely depressurize. And now we're going to go ahead and take the lid off. And we'll pull one of these guys out. Lid's loose, and it's sunken down. So the, it's got the uh, vacuum inside. That's a good thing. And it looks like you can kind of see the bacon through the parchment a little bit. And it all looks like it cooked. Alrighty, folks. <clears throat> so let's do an unveiling because I am about to cook me up some bacon here. And what I'll do is I'll get our little pan out that I'm going to cook it in. Do you want over medium or scrambled? Uh, scrambled is fine. Scrambled. Uh, cook it in our iron skillet. Right, so yeah, this one didn't seal. So since this one, this is one of the only one that didn't seal. Since it didn't, we're going to use it. Can you please turn your phone on? Yes. The unveiling at least. Okay. Now, and also explain, so explain how you have to, now that you have the extra fat storage and, uh, tell them, keep in mind, we're opening this the next morning so that it's still, um, liquidy, but over time, what they'll notice within the first day or two, the fat will congeal and it turns white and it is kind of messy to get it out, is our understanding. Well, I think you just told them. Oh, is that the thing on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> anyway, like she said. So you guys can see the bacon is pretty much already cooked. Well, it is. It's completely cooked. And so you kind of want to fry it up in the pan so that it gets that crispy kind of texture to it. So I'm going to take all this and I'm going to put it down to cook it. I'll uh, probably take some of this out. And, and uh, all right. Well, guys, as you can see, the bacon is uh, cooked up. Looks like bacon. Smells like bacon is bacon um, but it's crumbly and I've uh, read online forums with the first mate where people talk about canning bacon and this is a common common situation but it's still bacon we can still eat it we put in scrambled eggs and after we've been out sailing for a year and we're out of food we'll have bacon <laughs> this this will become the new bacon this will be it for us and uh, yeah salads or anything right flashing that means it's, it's recorded All right, what'd you think, Captain? Well, um, the bacon texture is, is different because obviously the way it's cooked, but the flavor is all there. It's, it tastes really good. Um, I'm not disappointed at all. I really liked it. I, Even though it's not as my bacon's not as crispy as I normally would like my bacon, I don't feel that it's really any different. I feel like I'm eating the same scrambled eggs and bacon that I would eat if I cooked bacon the regular way. So overall I'm declaring a success. If we have this out at sea and we want to have bacon and eggs one morning or at least bacon, we've got bacon. I completely agree.